Hey guys, welcome to this brand new tutorial. My name is Filippo and today we're gonna create this dreamy look effects entirely inside DaVinci Resolve 17. I normally do this kind of effects with my Black Pro Mist or with other dreamy like filters, but today I wanna just take a look on how to create them just entirely DaVinci Resolve. So right here I got a really simple uh, working node tree with the plugin look designer that I'm using a lot on tons of production I'm working at. This shot is being shot with um, the original lens Petzval 85mm. That that was actually pretty dirt during this specific shot but this has the right motivation for the effects we're gonna create and I will be talking about my structure, really simple by the way, um, look designer uh, working methods on another video inside my channel. So basically what I've done here, I got C200 um, footage and I put as an IDT, you know, a conversion from my C200 color space inside a Ari uh, color space and then I stayed inside Ari color space for um, my looks and I outputted this from the Ari color space to Rex 709, so really simple. Actually, we're gonna see this deeply on another video. On this branch of my node tree, I applied some dodge and burning, so just to make my image stand out a bit more, track their bar off as her highs, so everything stand out in an even better way. And I wanna create this kind of dreamy look. We got, we got this really particular flare from this lens, by the way, sorry for that dirt, that's unprofessional by the way, but that's okay for a tutorial, we won't use this on, on the final on the final production. And I want to create for this specific effect a few parallels just right there. So let's just move them here for a second. Let me create two parallels, let me clean up everything for you. And Actually, I create parallels, but I want to create layer mixer node because I want to work with layers. And for this specific FX, I want to go um, into my layer mixer, go into composite mode, and choose lighten. Okay, nothing will happen because I I haven't applied um, FX to to my correctors right now. And I want to start from this middle one. I do this one, I want to add radial blur. And just by applying radial blur, you will start seeing that something is happening right here. So radial blur uh, used with this composite mode will just, you know, shift the highlighted part of my image and just start twiddling them around. What I want to do here is just found uh, smooth track that it's working for us. I just want to go to 40 like this, okay, before and after. And what I want to do, I just want to isolate the whole part and I don't want to affect this to the eye of my actress. So you can take the selection that I got right here, stream that down to my corrector and Go to the node key and invert it. In that way, my effects will be applied to my track data and it will be working on the whole image except for the eyes. So, it is a really cool way, you know, to work. Another thing that I want to do is just dragging this key selection to my hopper corrector, invert this to and I want to apply also there my glow. And this glow will play a really big role in combo with our radial blur. So by going there, I want to select the shine threshold that it's working for me. And it might be right there. I want to play a bit with the spread. You want to be gentle with this because it might be you know, working strangely by, you know, being affected with a radial blur at the same time with layers. So, just be a bit gentle here. And it will create this really strange, dreamy effects. And this is cool. You want to take an extra eye on parts where you see really strong highlights. 
like there but in my case everything is well organized and nothing is clipping and you want to take also a step back with your effects and just if you need to exaggerate it exaggerate it a bit On this specific case, I don't want it to affect this part of my image, and so I'm also going to create a shape right here. And I want it to affect just a portion of my image in this way. Okay. Perfect. And at least but not last, I will carry also my key selection right here so as you can see it's crucial to select you know a specific part of the image on your dungeon burning process and then carry around you know selection and just work with them later and with this one i just want to add some really simple lens blur same thing again i want to invert it invert the note key and with this one i'm going to to anamorphism all the way up. Wanna play a bit with the chroma shift and a bit with the blur. Right here the blur will play a uh, really huge role with the glow. You can see that it's kind of expanding that glow by blurring it up a bit. And I want to play with the global blend too. I want to exaggerate it a bit like this. I also want, I actually want, you know, this selection right here will be better for this one. I want to play a bit with the blend. Okay, pretty cool. Really smooth, but really well working. Once you once you've done this, this dream effects will be really really strong on your image. And one thing that you might want to do is maybe crank up the details that you got on your highs. And this specific one, I already crank up a bit of my details right here. I might want to add some mid-tone details, just a touch. like this and as simple as effective as you can see just three characters made the game and we got a really cool effects done 100 percent inside the venture resolve and if you're still spending hours around the web searching for the life-changing tutorial be known that the only thing you need to learn is how to craft a methodical and properly craft working path I made two color grading masks, one themed for beginner and one for expert colorists. In these two masks, I compressed 10 years of on-ground experience into more than 25 hours of video content. If you want to level up your color grading skills, check the link below. Until the next time, be brave and make it better.